Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Roni. I'm AI researcher at Nexar, and today I want to talk about how we can deploy open source LLM on our local machines and how easy it actually is. Uh, I want to start by sharing my personal experience with uh, those uh, open source LLMs. So as you know, in the last uh, year or two years, almost every week, new open source LLM published, and maybe each month it's the new LLM so far the, with the best performance. And a lot of times I want to check uh, those models myself, myself, send a few prompts to the model, get some responses, and try to actually evaluate how good those models are in our internal data. And the way that I usually uh, done it was maybe go to the Hugging Face uh, UI, send some uh, chunks of data, and get some responses. If the performance looked promising, I, I even can download the notebook, the model to my notebook using Transformers library. Uh, the time to generate the responses uh, was very slow. And I find myself after one or two experiments, when I have a real problem that I want to solve, I go back to the good and old ChatGPT or Claude or some of the hosted models to actually get the benefit from those models. Um, and if I find myself don't use those open source LLMs, uh, this exposed me for a few different problems. Uh, the first and the main problem is privacy, because if we want to, to uh, send data to third party model or hosted model, uh, we cannot do that uh, for sensitive data or for customer data. The second problem is the cost. Uh, if we use API, we can pay per token. And if we talk about scale, the cost could be huge. Um, about stability, sometimes uh, companies like OpenAI uh, close old APIs like DaVinci. Sometimes they can change something. And if we build product on top of those models, the API can one day just disappear. Because we need to send each uh, prompt to the internet, we have problems of latency for real time or uh, connectivity if we're running on the edge and we don't have connection to the internet. And finally, we have the fine tuning issue. Because if you want to fine tune uh, some model uh, to do this uh, on the hosted LLMs, it could be very problematic. Um, we cannot fine tune the model in any way we want, and the cost could be very high. So I start to search uh, for some open source platform that will allow me to use uh, those open source LLM um, first to deploy the models and call them view API with a very fast and robust way. And second is to use uh, some UI similar to ChatGPT with good UX ex experience. Uh, so I search and explore a few different tools, and I want to share with you the recipe that I found uh, the, with the best suit for my needs. So first is the Olama. Uh, Olama is a platform, uh, very robust framework that allows us to deploy open source LLMs. Uh, it's actually built on top of Llama C++, and this is why uh, it's very fast. Um, to install the platform, we need to, to run just one command on Linux, and they know how to utilize quantization, and they have very good connection to the hardware, so we get responses super fast. They have a built-in library with almost all of the famous open source LLMs that we can consume very easily, but it's extendable library. So if we want to load custom model from Hugging Face, we can do that without any problem. So let's talk about the installation. To install Olama, as I mentioned before, you just need to run one command on Linux. If you're using Mac or Windows, you can install one file. And during the installation process, the system automatically detects if you have GPU or not. And if you don't have GPU, the, the process is still going to continue in the same way. Um, but for sure, the generation rate will be much more slower. I'm going to deep dive on that in the next slide. So after you install Olama, you can use uh, each model that they have in their library just by calling Olama run model name. And if you want to use custom model, you can uh, write uh, Olama run and the pass to your custom model. So let's talk about the rate. Uh, I checked Olama on two different platforms, with GPU and without GPU. The GPU that I checked is not state-of-the-art GPU, it's RTX 2080, kind of old GPU. And the rate that I got was more than 90 tokens per second. 
kind of impressing uh, rate without any do something special. And the CPU rate for sure was much more slower, it's about 1.4 token per second. Probably is not enough for real time application, but for offline tasks it could be relevant. So if you want to build customer service bot without GPU, probably the rate will be much uh, more uh, slower. But if you build something offline, like daily documentation summary, you can send the documentation at night, maybe even on parallel, and get the result at morning, and they will be waiting for you. So after you have the infrastructure in place, the uh, model and the uh, OLAMA itself, how we can communicate with the model? So first, we can use CLI. So as you can see here, I just type OLAMA run LAMA3, ask them a, pr a question, like tell me a joke, and go the response with the CLI. And they have also very nice API with, uh, you can check the, the, their documentations. And I want to present also um, one uh, open source uh, repository that I build. It's called Interactor Llama. So you can, there is basically one function that wraps the most of the capabilities that uh, Olama suggests, including support with messages or chat, multi-modality multi support for model that support those capability. You can choose if you want to stream the result or not, and much more. So let's see how it actually looks like. So this is an uh, example that uh, I use Olama to generate response uh, with Llama 3 using my function that uses the Olama API. This is how 90 tokens per second look like, very fast, and we can see the result at stream inside the notebook. And this is an example of the same API, but this time I call to Lava. It's a multimodal uh, model, I think it's state-of-the-art, from the open source models. So I send an uh, image and prompt. I'm not sure that Lava understands the connection between Mark Zuckerberg to, La to Lama, but anyway, I got response that was based on my prompt and the image that I showed to the model. So let's see how it uh, uses CPU. So this is how 1.4 token per second look like. For sure, it's not easy and not uh, uh, relevant to use like online. But if we want to use something offline and we don't have access to GPU, it could be relevant. And as you can see, to do this large summary, it took like uh, eight and a half minutes. Finally, I tried to install uh, those platform on my Raspberry Pi. Uh, and it works, so basically here the CPU is Cortex, it's not even, it's, it's mobile processor basically. And we are able to run 8 billion parameters LLM, totally local, and that's it. And for sure, if you want, we can change the model and not use Llama 3, and use a small model like Dolphin or Phi uh, with less parameters, but even 8 billion parameters can work if you're using Olama without doing nothing special, even on mobile device. So after I install Olama and can call to any of the LLMs the models totally local, I basically solve the problems they have before. I don't need to concern about the privacy because the data is remains local. Uh, the cost per query, it's free, for sure, behind the cost for the hardware. But even for that, we can deploy the platform on the cloud, and then we just pay per demand. And if we use Kubernetes or something, we can scale down to zero. Uh, the scalability, the model doesn't going to change until I activity decide to change the version. We don't need to concern about latency or connectivity because it's running offline. And I can fine tune the model in whatever way that I want. At least by the end, I export the model to GGUF format. This is the Lama CPP format that Olama expect to get. One more technical point, when we install Olama by default, the um, model listening just to communication from localhost. And if you want to call it from outside servers, you just need to add one line. And by adding that, uh, you actually told to Olama to listen into communication from outside. Um, now let's talk about what is actually model on Olama behind the scenes. So as you know, LLM basically is two main parts. The first part is huge file of numbers. This is basically the weights. And the second part is text file or code that uh, tell to the system how we can leverage the huge uh, weights file. So the first part, uh, the weights in Olama is Llama CPP or GGUF format, and the text file called model file 
This is the field of, those, uh, of this file. The first and the main important part is the from. This is the path to the weights. And after we can uh, set some parameters like temperature, system message, or even adapter. So if you train LoRa adapter, you just need to end one line to the model file, um, write the path to, to your adapter, and that's it. You can communicate with the model and leverage your LoRa adapter that you build. And here you can see an example of a change that I made on the default model file of Llama 3 that I downloaded from all Llama library. I add two lines. The first line is that I de de increase the temperature to 0 0.1. And the second line, I add system message that say, you are machine learning ops expert created for MDLI ops confluence. And then I ask the model, tell me about yourself. And the model answer me. I am a machine learning op expert, ta, ta, ta. so the system message are working. Finally, in, I added this slide yesterday, because two days ago, new version of Olama just published, Olama 0.2, including support of uh, concurrency. So right now you can use both parallel uh, responses and even use multi-model support, so different users can communicate with different models at the same time. For sure, we need to pay uh, with a bit more uh, memory, but it's working in the default uh, stage right now, and that when we install Olama, it's enabled. So this is about Olama and how we can leverage and use and deploy open source LLM and communicate with those models efficiently. Now let's talk about UI UX experience, because some of the magic that OpenAI created when they published ChatGPT was the fun. We can communicate with those models easily, send them messages and get responses via the UI. Uh, so this is the point that I want to mention, Open Web UI. So Open Web UI is another library, again, with commercial license, MIT. And they suggest user-friendly web UI that allow us to communicate with APIs uh, to talk with LLM. They support both Olama and OpenAI, so you don't need to choose to use just open source, you still can communicate with GPT-4, but you can also leverage all the LLMs that exist outside. They have, again, very easy setup and installation, you can install it on Docker or on Kubernetes, and they have a very nice way to view the responses from the model, similar to ChatGPT, by showing uh, codes, markdowns, LaTeX, and etc. and they work on desktop, on mobile phone, and basically on any other platform that we can imagine. So this is how Open Web UI look like. You can see that I can choose if I want to communicate with Olama or with OpenAI. I can even enable web search if I connect the system to search engine, and then I get responses from Llama 3. And this is an example of the same system, but I can choose Lava, a multimodal open source model, to send some questions and image like the invitation to this confluence, ask Olama to describe what you see in that image, and I get very uh, good response. Again, multimodal uh, experience, free and local. Let's talk about a few more features that uh, Open Web UI suggests. So behind to the internet uh, web search, they have also uh, management, so you can decide different rules and different permissions for different users. Um, they have the capability to download the entire database of questions and answers uh, to your system to use it for future fine tuning. They have also the capability to label the answers like like or unlike to use them for RLHF for future DPO. And you can also create uh, similar to custom GPTs, custom prompt engineering for different use cases and then you can choose what you want to use. They have huge user community with pipelines, uh, agents, tool, function calling, and etc. You can download them from an open web UI website. And they have built-in RAG capability. So let's talk a bit about uh, the RAG capability they have. You can cre create the RAG by upload uh, local documentations or even communicate with uh, servers with the website just by add hashtag and then the name of the, the document or the URL. And after that, you can decide what will be the embedding model that you want to use. Again, you can choose from OpenAI or, or Llama. You can play with the parameters of the RAG, like the top K, top P, and etc. directly from the UI. 
and they have also the feature of citation for uh, transparency. So you can see uh, at the response from which the commentation is came out. So right now we are on the point that we know how we can install very good backend uh, for uh, LLMs and also UI. And this allows us to basically consume any new model that just published in a few minutes and expose this model to entire company. So this example is took like 10 minutes after Gamma 2 just published. I add to the model to my system. We want to ch check his capabilities in Hebrew. By the way, as you can see, it's not perfect, but still good than other set of the art LLMs like Lama 3. But again, the idea is that right now we can add any model, LLM model that just came out to your system and allow to the entire organization use this model in the same way that you use ChatGPT very easily. So finally, I think that the consequences of the fact that we can install totally local any LLM that exists outside give us to a place that we actually can implement the concept of LLM in the loop or algogenes. So algogenes, it's a paper that created by uh, Amir Shahar, and he actually suggests to uh, add the power of LLM to existing uh, algorithms. Um, for example, if you use k-means, we can show to the LLM uh, the distribution of the data, the statistic of the data, and ask them to generate better starting k-point than randomly, or for image if we want to get some perception and or even uh, count the number of the object in the image without dedicating a specific model for this task. So right now, after that, we have LLM that runs on the edge, uh, and it's pri we don't need to consider about the privacy. We can send some prompts to do this LLM during our pipeline and get the responses. So thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. So the question was uh, how much uh, they uh, actually production ready, if I understand you correctly. Standalone. standalone, yeah. So they have very nice work about the standalone production ready. You can install it in Kubernetes or Docker or any other platform. They're very production ready from all the aspects, yeah. So if you're ready to install this, I have here two more backup slides for you. One is troubleshooting, and second is a link uh, summarization of the links. So feel free to check this if you want to install the system. Thank you.